What it do, man? It's your boy, your old got it, man. Got to know we right here on the west side in the heart of where it all started. Right here with Parlay. Right here in the apartments with Parlay. You know what time it is. Let's get it. Hey, Parlay. Meet me at the apartment. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. The fuck going on? What's going on? Now, going? look, let me tell y'all. We doing this shit a little different out right here with this one right here. All right? We in the apartments. We kick your shit. We laid back. Yeah. You know, my, my, all my youngins be, you know, they see the OG talk the podcast and they be hearing us like, man, we need to get on there. We need to get on there. We got a story. We got a story. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of youngins who do got stories. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to just push them to the side. So we bring them niggas to the apartment. And I did one episode already with my, with my little bro Joe Gifted. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't drop it, but I wanted to do something special for the streets. And I want to go get somebody who I know. Who these, who these niggas looking up to and they listening to and who rhyme out them motherfucker. And so. I just thought about it for a second. And I was talking to my mans and he was like, hey, why, why we get little homie out there? I was like, whoa, nigga, I'm just listening to that nigga shit. Nigga, that's how shit supposed to go. So we in this motherfucker, man. Uh -huh. With that uh -huh. being said, man, i like to welcome motherfucking Euro got it. Welcome to the motherfucking pop, man, my dog. Oh, for sure, for sure, bro. It's a blessing to be here for real, for real. Yeah, so, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so now listen, all right? So I know, like, when niggas be watching OG talk, you know, we be going back in these niggas' stories, just figuring out who they are, you know what I'm saying, how, what made them, so. the ups and downs, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I want to salute the niggas and give niggas roses who paved the way for niggas. Because so. everybody who I have on that podcast is some niggas who done done some, done some shit and started a wave and some shit, you see what I'm saying? So. But it's new niggas now who create new ways, who doing new shit, who got new followers, you know what I'm saying, who got new fans, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like... It get, it get to that point where niggas start getting old. Yeah. And niggas don't be wanting to accept that shit. Right, right. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Niggas don't be wanting to accept that shit. These fact. niggas be thinking they be young all the time. That shit don't, that shit don't be like that. Like you see what I'm saying? Okay. Oh. So I know at, at a point in time, I'm going to be that person where niggas going to be like, oh, man, that, that, nigga, that shit 20, 30 years ago. So I want to use my voice and what I got now and all the influence I got now and all the homies I got around me to shine some of this light on some of these youngins so they can know how to do the same thing when they get my age, the same way I should same way our OG taught me. Because I really feel like it's a it's a lack of leadership when it comes to the young niggas. So, you know what I'm saying? So. I hear a lot of times niggas say, man, I don't want to talk to them young niggas. Them niggas they don't listen. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't listen. They don't say nothing. So with that statement being said, by you being one of the younger guys, why do you think that the young niggas, why do you think they say, they say that? Why do you think the, the older guys, the old head, the OG, why do you think they say that? Why, why I think like it's like a class where they don't, they don't really fuck with each other. Yeah. I really think it come it really come with you kind of answered it a little bit as far as like when niggas getting old. The problem is it ain't nothing wrong. You can always be old and still be relevant, but you just got to know how to do a Drake and Birdman and people like that. They stay relevant because they learn how to adapt with time. Facts. We ain't wearing big jeans no more. We ain't, like, no offense. We fuck with the DJs, but it's a different time. You just got to accept that it's a different time and learn how to play your role in that different time. You can't be trying to be, like, you can't be 40, 50 years old. You know, you ain't, if you ain't Jay-Z, you can't really be trying to be a rapper if a rapper ain't your, they ain't your area no thing. more. If you yeah. ain't going to be doing what young niggas doing, it's a different time. Like, when it come down to it, a lot of the old heads like to talk shit about what the young nigga's doing, but it's a young nigga time now. It don't matter how you feel about it, nigga. You had your time. You know what I'm saying? If you can't adapt to the time and then make yourself relevant in that time or play your position, then that's how people become irrelevant. And a lot of times, the younger generation, I think they the reason why they rebut against the, the old heads so hard is because they understand times change. And they don't want to hear the old head because the, like a lot of what the old heads say, they might be giving them game. But the game don't make sense in today's time. Yeah. Nigga might tell you right now, like, hey, bro, you really want to be successful? Go print up 100,000 CDs and pass them out. Nigga, that's not being successful. We don't listen to CDs. <laughs> yeah, no nah. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Fact. So it's like being able to incorporate. If you could, if you could transition and just be make yourself relevant by playing your position, you you can stay relevant for a long ass time. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, whatever you was how to at the moment don't mean that what you got to keep doing to stay. You got to just be like, all right, cool, I did this. Now I'm seeing that it's, it's washing out. Before I wash myself out, I'm gonna learn to transition. Yeah, I, I, me, I, I think that if you want to get killers to listen to you, you gotta be a killer. 
If you want hustlers to listen to you, you gotta be a hustler. You know what I'm saying? If you want robbers to listen to you, you gotta be a robber. You see what I'm saying? If you yeah. want scammers to listen to you, you gotta be a scammer. I think personally, that's where the connection come in at. You got the wrong type of people trying to talk to the wrong type of young niggas. Facts. Knowledge is knowledge, but everybody don't receive it the same you know, way. Right, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So if you ain't getting no money, even if you got money back then, if you ain't getting no money now, Currently, or exactly. you ain't got no fly clothes or shoes Facts. on now, you Facts. can't talk to no young nigga about no money. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. And I think that's where the disconnection come in at, as far as the older guys. And as far as the younger guys, they have to understand too that even though these niggas don't have these things, these niggas has done the same shit that y'all niggas doing before y'all niggas were doing it. So it's a thing to learn from these niggas. Knowledge is knowledge. I don't give a fuck who give it to you. Exactly. It could be the, the, the Jay at the corner ask you for a dollar. You see what I'm saying? Ask a nigga about, give me a story, give me something, give me some life knowledge or something. Because niggas don't live the life. Fact. You see what I'm saying? Fact. If you ask a, if you ask a Jay how you become a Jay, now you know one reason not to become a Jay. Fact. Knowledge is knowledge. Fact. You see what I'm saying? So I just think that's where the disconnection come in at. And as far as the music side, I just feel like niggas don't know when it's, to let it go, dog. I agree so with saying. that too. <laughs> I agree. Like I said, like, you know, niggas don't understand. You can stay hot forever, but you just got to, like, learn to switch your position. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe, nigga, if you can't dunk no more, but you a shooter, nigga, all right, we're going to have to switch position to home. You ain't the center no more because you ain't jumping out the roof like that. Young nigga. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think what it really come down to, like, I don't really think it's so much about titles no more. Like, everybody want to have that title. I think the only two titles that really matter is if you a hustler and if you real. Fact. Hustler not necessarily saying you ain't got to be scared. You ain't got to be doing nothing to be at least. Hustler, like, like every day I wake up, I'm going to make at least $500 a day. Every day. I got to. I'm going to get for high Socks, a hustler. tank tops, bags. It don't matter. I'm for how I high I'm looking at high man. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? And it, that's the only thing that people really being able to relate to is like what's real and who hustling. Like little baby hustling from... You got a little baby down to the petty nigga, but anybody that's maintained, as long as you hustling, you can influence somebody to get them the game. Cause you know what I'm saying? Times transition. Uh, uh, we ain't don't, you know, I hate to say it, but it's like the dope game ain't like it was back then. No, nah, yeah, nah, nah. scam, you know what nah, I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. So like you was just saying, a nigga who so they, he might be giving another nigga the game, but it kinda like if it if you yeah, tell it don't help me. And it suffice it to me, cause I ain't doing that right there. There you go. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Facts, facts, exactly. facts. Um, where the hell, where you from, yo? Westside. Westside. Yeah. Tell, tell them where you from, what, what, what hood, what street, you know what I'm saying? I was born over there uh, off Westlake and Simpson, Heritage Square Apartment, right behind the BP, right before they knocked it down, where everybody used to uh, shoot horseshoe at and shit like that. Fact. Moved over there to Cascade, right off of uh, Alvarado Terrace. I went to Beach Hill Elementary. Then I went to Brown Middle School. Then I moved out to, I moved out to the Decatur on the east side. This shit going down Decatur. outside the apartment, boy. Uh, this shit going down outside the apartment. Man, come on. <laughs> I stay, I, I, man, listen, when they shot hot horseshoe at, like even now, like sometimes when I sleep, I still hear because I was a little kid. All I remember, clink, 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 clink. I remember hearing people get shot, all kind of shit going on behind the park. Like that way, that way it started for me. Then, you know, we started moving up in life and shit like that. You know, shit started getting better. We moved over to the east side, but I was just, I couldn't adapt because I went from the east side. So it's I always, a difference. It's just a difference. I tell niggas a lot all the time. It, niggas say Atlanta, but niggas don't know the difference between niggas. You can know a west side nigga. From an east side from nigga. East side nigga. It, but you got to be from Atlanta. Know, you know that, that facts. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas don't even dress the same for real. Niggas nah. don't dress the same. Niggas don't talk the niggas same. Don't talk niggas the don't same. move the same. Nope. And I ain't had nothing against them because, you know, they get it how they get it on their side. But it that wasn't where I was from. The West Side different, yeah. dog. West Side. So I yeah. stayed on both sides. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See, yeah. my whole family, we were born on the East, but I moved to the West. I, I was raised on the West like okay. nine years old. Okay. Know, so that's why I said I'm from the West. Okay. It's, it's different, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm nah, saying? It is. It's the West Side. It it's is. West Side shit, dog. It is. Shout out to the motherfucking West Side, man. man come on. Shout out to goddamn Bankhead, Cicero, oh, MLK. Okay. Shout out to goddamn Hollywood Road. Shout out oh, to Perry, uh, Perry Boulevard. You feel me? For real, dog. Oh, damn, man. So, um, we did music shit, right? Mm. Like, I remember mean, the first time I heard heard your song, it was um, Posse. Yeah. It was Posse. That's the first song that, that I heard. I was like, oh, this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? They were like, they're Euro. Like, okay, like, he he, uh, he fought with um, Boom. A.E. They don't say Boom. I said, I know Boom. I've been knowing Boom for a long man, time. Man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Shout out to Boom. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. I like, that shit right, right there. But you know how you hear songs? See, I don't really listen to music like that. For sure. I listen to a lot of my niggas shit. I really Why? I don't know why. I just... 
I prefer to hear my, you know what I'm saying? Because I can relate. You know what I'm saying? I can know this shit he's saying, I'm feeling it because I know what this nigga talk about. You know what I'm saying? I like relatable music. You know what I'm saying? So so I did not hear another song. I think it was um the one with Ghana. Kodak. Kodak. Kodak, Kodak. Yeah, cut that, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh yeah. I said, who the fuck this is right here? They were like, that you're wrong. Cause I thought it was Gunner. Cause yeah. when I heard it, I didn't hear the first verse. I heard the, the, the hook melody and I heard yeah. and I heard Gunner. So I was like, I'm like, but Gunner be coming up with the motherfucker. And I found out it was you. So when I heard that motherfucker, I said, you know what? Let me go listen to this motherfucker. The Apple motherfucker. Psh. Go listen. Said, okay. Let motherfucker come on and listen. I'm like, okay. okay yeah. Have right so then I'm I'm listening like I said I'm listening to the cadence I'm listening to how you saying I'm listening to the rap so like I I can hear music real good you see what I'm saying so, so I can know when that shit natural I can hear when niggas pushing that shit I can hear when it's mentally like you know came up with some shit I don't know how I can just I can dictate this shit to music so, and your shit so fluent I was like oh, nah that shit easy shout shout to saying that shit you know what I'm saying yeah. where influence you didn't start doing music bro I came up in the church I was always into music. Always, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, percussion, drums, and shit. And then it was like, it was crazy, cuz, uh, shout out Fourth Ward, a lot of niggas over there. Like, that when I really, when I started producing, it was like some of Jeezy folks over there on Fourth Ward. Them folk, like, really, like, embraced me and shit like that. I started making beats for them. You started, started making writing. beats first? I started making, I was making beats. I was, I was rapping, but I wasn't trying to really rap. You just I just went behind the scenes. My thing always been a hustler, bro. It ain't matter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Anything, I'm I'm a hustler. I'm always gonna try to chase a bag. That was always me. So I'm like, I wanted to produce some money. I wanted to write money. I want whatever. But every time I did something, it never came out the way I envisioned it. So nigga told me shit. Nigga, bro, just try try that shit yourself. I like, nah, I don't really do this. First song I did was like that shit was crazy. So it was like, bro, come on. After that, like the nigga stopped charging me for studio time. Like I was going over there paying for studio time, just cause I was trying to get in the yo. Like I ain't had no computer, I ain't had shit. But the nigga had a computer, let me pay for studio time. I come over there, and learn how to do shit myself, all that type of shit. And that thing I know from there it was just like, I was just rapping. I was just rapping. Like how many of y'all niggas in here raising the church? It be the yeah, well, they, they have, it be half the street. Listen, tell you, listen. Well, tell you, you church give a lot of nigga they music shit. Your melodies and everything. I'm gonna keep one hundred. Now you know what I'm saying. I ain't knocking nobody who wasn't telling the truth about it. But when it came down to it, what people, I think what we be fucked up at, we be thinking like, cause you the way you you can't help the way you were brought up. Yeah, a killer came from the church. A killer came from. Parent might have been gay as hell. You can't mm-hmm. help the way niggas say, nigga, I know the real you. Yeah, nigga, I was nine, nigga, you saw me in church. Yeah. But then when I turned 17, I shot your ass, didn't I? Yeah, like, yeah, you know he talking about it, nigga. <laughs> and, you know, shit, like, when you, when you get old, I think, like, that's what we, we, we say, so, like, people don't understand, like, the growth method. How sub, sub, suburban kids come to the hood. The hood got a different, the outlook on how the hood show love, suburban kids never see that shit. Yeah. So them niggas get attached to that shit. They like, nigga, y'all love being po y'all niggas love that shit. Yeah. Y'all love this hood shit. Them niggas wanna be something that they see. That's how you, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. that's how it go about. That's how you get kids like, why the fuck this nigga doing it? He ain't had to. But this nigga saw you was a hustler. It seemed like you did it by yourself. Niggas don't be wanting to come up out of their parents. You know what I'm saying? So when you become a man, you make your own decisions. You can either go this route or you can go that route. But it's just about whatever route you're gonna play. You can't have play that shit. Like it's I a lot of successful stories that come out like that, though. That's you know how saying? exactly. Because we had, I had big oom. You know what I'm saying on on my podcast, OG Talk, and his story was kind of same. You know what I'm saying? He grew up with his mom and his dad. They was doing good on houses, had good money. He was just selling a little weed to his little partners. Then he had a homie who was from the projects from McCannaville say, hey, we finna open up a trap right here. Then that shit became a gang. Then that, that shit became this. You know what I'm saying? Then that, that, that led to this. And he said, the feds got hot on him. He said, you know what? Shit, I'm gonna stop hustling for a whole year. He oh, he started Big Hunt Records. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even so, know his story, So stuff that happened high, like that. that you know happened. what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it, it, it get down. See, But see, that's the reason why I wanna have people like this from Milano who helped build this shit to tell these stories because yeah. a lot of people don't know a lot of this shit, dog. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, niggas don't know Franchise Boy Story. Niggas don't really know Palais. Niggas don't. You got to be from Atlanta to know me. I know. You see what I'm saying? I know. If you ain't from Atlanta, you might just be like, oh, okay, okay. You see I what I'm saying? I know. I know. So it's different. Fact. But it's time for to tell these stories because Atlanta, we the most popping shit for the last 20 years. 
Nigga got to know who, who, who's what, from what side of town, what that town mean, what's the part of nigga town. Nigga really got to be validated. Yeah, yeah, real, fact, real. dog. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Fact, yeah. dog. Because a lot of niggas fuck with a lot of these niggas in the city because these niggas be on social media and these out of town niggas think these niggas be really popping. Yeah. These niggas really don't be popping like at that all. in this city, dog. At all, at all. You see what I'm saying? Level. You know what I'm saying? Level. And then, but if you get in the wrong situation, Nick can't take that shit back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, Nick got to goddamn find out who, who, what, and who, what. Right, right. right. Fast. Fast. Mm-hmm. Are you speaking the real? I think, like, really, that, like, a lot for me, that's why it's like, for me, it's kind of like, I did my thing, but my thing wasn't being known because my pop came from the street. Mm-hmm. Like, so when my pop come from the street, I always knew it was like my mom went from the street, but my pop from the street. My pop stayed in the street, regardless. Even when things got better, home just stayed in the street. I stayed around my pop. That would make me be like, nah, I, I like what I'm seeing. I like the love that my pop get embraced with and shit like that. And so it was like me having my pop, I had the advantage that a lot of niggas don't okay, get. Yeah, yeah. Niggas wanted to make a title. You want to be known as a killer. You want to be known as a jack boy. You want to be known as a nigga. That's not the nigga. The kids that get rich, nigga, off of anything you don't like, nigga. If I'm gonna be a killer, nigga, I'm knocking niggas off for a fee. It ain't no, oh, I'm I just, just yeah. I'm not doing shit like so. I never in the streets. I never moved like a young nigga. Like I never no disrespect to the young niggas, but it was never about being seen. It was always about like everything we doing, we doing to get rich. We hitting licks. We we stealing car. We everything we doing is money, money coming behind. Man, yeah, we go in the money. club. We spend twenty dollars in the club. We leaving out with about five purses. We leaving out with everything. Like that's why it's like even with these new niggas who who doing like uh, hitting the cars and shit like that. These niggas not like out here like we the we the uh, car jack the the car thief. Niggas ain't doing that. Niggas doing what they doing and they going back and you ain't knowing who it is. That's how it was supposed to always be. So you get a lot of niggas who might be like, man, I ain't never seen home out here. Yeah, nigga, that was the key. You weren't supposed to see me. You weren't okay. I, I wasn't getting money with you, nigga. I wasn't supposed to see you. You know what I'm saying? So Atlanta I don't too like, big for that anyway. That, that Atlanta was, too big for that. Man, like it, I tell niggas out of town, nigga, me all the time. Police who really run the city, bro. Atlanta too big for nobody to run anything, dog. Now you Everybody might niggas on the west side motion, might run a little really. section. Yeah, you okay. might. Oh, there's the big dog on the oh, on Bankhead over there. And this is the big dog on this part of Simpson. This is the big dog in the bluff. Fact. You see what I'm saying? This is the big dog in the flat. But that shit, niggas don't run the city. Man, it ain't hell ain't no. Like that, like, <laughs> hell no. It ain't that never that been like that, that dog. Exactly. You either just got a good fake car, move wherever you want, and that's that's how I, how I always rock, always kept my fake clean. Like I go anybody city, I mean anybody hood. I ain't we ain't walking in on no goddamn nigga. This my shit, nigga. Nah, what's up? Who who here? It's always gonna be respect and love always. to you. Just respect the love, and then if we gotta get active, that's when it get active. But we you ain't like niggas that they don't understand. You don't. It ain't about woofing up on a nigga. It's about seeing who gonna embrace the love. When a nigga don't embrace that love, then you get active. Like okay, nice. you think this shit a joke now? Now I got to get active with you because yes. I try. I showed you love before. All you had to do would be a real nigga back. And when it come down to being real, nigga just don't understand. Like real nigga just know the respect. We ain't stepping on no nigga toe. It's you like an unspoken code. Real is like an unspoken code. An if unspoken you don't code. understand the code, Fact. it ain't made for you. It's just Fact. certain shit you don't like. I bro, I used to go to niggas projects. We used to do shows and shit. You know what I'm saying? We might go to St. Louis and you know you get the promoter. I need some weed. I ain't. I never used to like. For niggas to bring my weed because niggas be bringing back weed that I never liked. Mm-hmm. So I used to say, take me to the hood. And I used to go, I used to have all my chains on. I used to be like, Paul, you finna go with these niggas? Is this, this, this? I was like, all right, nigga, like, this shit is respect, thing, bro. Fact. Like, okay, they, they only gotta pull their pistols out, nigga. If you, but give me your shit, bro. I'm dead serious, bro. Like, Hell, nigga. I got insurance on this shit, nigga. I know y'all stay. Like, yeah. like, like you say, it's a respect thing. Yeah, yeah, and niggas should be respected. Like, nigga, you gonna come in here? I'm like, nigga, shit, I'm from the hood with this like, shit. Yeah, nigga, y'all gonna rob me, nigga? I'm gonna get it to you. I ain't stupid. You see what I'm saying? But it's that respect level. Yeah, that way and that's like to. checking in. So, like, nigga say checking in. Nigga, like, nigga, I ain't checking in. And that was wrong. This. Nigga use the wrong term, bro. Like, it's like, niggas, it, all this, like, you bitch. Like, if I have a problem, I'm gonna address a nigga before it. It ain't bitching. When you mm-hmm. when you turn around the way you look at it, checking in with a nigga, nah, nigga, nigga, come to your hood. What you gonna do? You gonna let a nigga just walk in your hood, just shoot a video, not say nothing? Nah, yeah, hey, nah. I'll check in. Gotta Show check some in. Respect. And then so do the same thing when you go to another. Hey, who did you? It ain't checking in. It's like, hey, what's up, bro? You know what I'm saying? You never know what happened. Like Houston, I'm good in Houston. I don't go. I just I just tell my bitch, hey, book us flight. We fly out. 
Nigga, it's already niggas in Texas on both sides. Like, I'm wherever I'm at, like, shit, New York, the same way. It's because you understand. When you understand respect, you build with niggas. Give niggas see you. me pop out like, nigga, I'm popping out. I'm talking about Blood, Crip, GD, all kind of niggas, 100 niggas in the room. Nigga, like, where your folks at? I'm like, nigga, it's me. Like, what y'all, y'all gonna do something? Cause, I, Cause I'm here, nigga, what's up? And then nigga said, nah, you know, we start conversion. That's down to, hey, bro, anytime you're in the city, bro. Let me know, my nigga, because you're going you gonna to be about with five niggas every time. So every time I'm in the city now, it's like, hey, bro, I'm here. I right, say that. I got five niggas picking you up from the airport right now. And I know what it is. Because That's how you it all start with respect. Not, you Facts, know what I'm saying? Dog. Yeah, that's Facts. just part of being real, though. Hey, how old you in, bro? I'm old, bro. I'm 31, bro. Hey, shit, but you, you young. Shit, that's still young, yeah, yeah, dog. I'm telling you, man. Hey. Shit, nigga, all these kids and responsibility, nigga, I feel old, nigga. I'm, Nigga, I'm paying you don't live a long notes. life. I'm paying house. I'm, I'm paying mortgages and all kind of shit. Airbnbs. Yeah, that that that's, that will come with being a good heart you is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. gonna put it on you because they know you're gonna do the right shit with it. For sure. They won't put it on you. They know you won't gonna do the shit that you're doing with it. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For and sure. That's how you're gonna continue to get blessed. For sure. At what point was the goddamn transition point where you just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I just want to do this street shit right here. This is. Fuck that shit. I ain't fucking with that shit no more. When was the transition point? Like how old you was and, and what happened to transition into you into that? I started dipping and dabbing really around like 16 to be for real. Mm -hmm. I, I went to Maze and then I ain't want to leave the city. So my little hangout area with like Laurie, Ashby and all that over there. My auntie used to have a house over there um, right there off Mitchell Street, right across from the KFC and shit. That's where we shot the Posse video at. Mm -hmm. And that really where like everything popped off like 18. I fucked around, went to uh Morehouse. I always been smart in here. Like, I ain't no stupid nigga. Told shit. You me. know what I'm told saying? Me smart. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm smart. I like intelligence. I like intelligence. Like intelligent yeah, I'm intelligent here. Like, and it just, I ain't gonna count, bro. It was like being at the school and everybody knew I was from Atlanta. Them niggas were like, oh, home from Atlanta. So everybody would ask me for the weed. I it like, always start with the goddamn weed, weed I'm man. To tell you, like, how you college and weed, how college and fucking weed. Well, Killer Mike said this shit on the show. He went to goddamn more house, start selling weed. Goddamn, yeah. think Don P said shit. it. I did it. You said you did it. That shit, yeah, like that's the way. Shit, because get what? And that how it, <laughs> it start. It started from the weed. My little partner said, "Nigga, you can make some more money." Found out about the powder. Found out about the pilot and then another movie. Found out about the robbery. It was like everything I'm seeing, niggas ain't getting caught for. So when you ain't getting caught for, it just it build up. It turned up, and that before you know it, you really ain't even thinking. You out, you just like I'm. All I thought before I got locked up, I was just like, shit, I'm just getting some money. That's all I'm doing. Nigga, I mean, I'm talking about nigga. I'm we loan houses up, my nigga, like loading houses up, like all the shit, cars, everything, chopping the cars. We. We going crazy, but I'm not realizing because I'm just trying to get me a dollar. That's it. I'm just yeah, trying you to- You chasing the money. Fuck school. School ain't paying shit. These niggas ain't talking about shit. That's thing I know it was just all the way up until about, I got locked up. That was like 22, 2012. I was like 2012. In 2012, I got locked up. Who you locked up for? Nine charges. Nine felony charges. Like, yeah. But shit got there. You came out there for, you, you did some time for it? You sat for a I little sat bit? I sat for like two years, and it was crazy because it like, all the niggas that I got with me, like everybody that with me right now, niggas that either roll with me doing that shit or niggas that I was fucking with before then, like everybody. So it's like, even when I tell the story, it's like, you know, like shit. Niggas, my, niggas I run with, like, they'll tell you, like, it's like, nigga, we went never on no whole shit. Two years, no statement, never told on nobody, I've had four co defendants, and all they wanted with names, I could have went home. But shit, nigga, it's like, you know. You playing on street, you gotta take what come with it. it ain't just I think up. and these young niggas, that's the part that they don't understand. That what niggas felt that and that way that would nigga be like that would a flaw shit come out because we we glorify what could come from it in a good aspect, but it's still a negative to it too. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, my nigga, you can get some money, but in the process, you could die, you can get snitched on, you can get robbed, you can go to jail. What you gonna do when you get to jail? Once you accept what you, if you accept, if you can accept the negative, like you can take the positive, you will survive in any situation. Like sure. I, when I got locked, I knew, I knew for a fact. It's like nigga, it ain't even. I'm not trying to figure out like, do I, do I tell or do I not? I already knew. It was already like I'm playing the game. Like I'm in the game. I got caught up, and I just got to see what's gonna be the outcome of it. And when you un when you understand right there, you don't do all that crying. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You don't do Facts. all that whining. Facts. You don't do all that snitching. 
Facts. You know what I'm saying? You don't do all that telling. You don't do all that wine, all Cause that crying at home. Because you understand what, what the fuck you doing. You playing the game. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. you're going to do it, stand on that shit. Facts. If you ain't going to stand on the shit, don't do that shit. It Facts. make it that easy. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Facts. If you if a nigga live by that, you'll survive. Stand on whatever the fuck you do. And if you can't stand on that shit, don't fucking do don't it. Don't do it. And they'll teach you, say, you know what? That ain't shit for me. I ain't going to do that, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be comfortable with making that decision. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I think that that's a lot of problems too. I think I think it's just conversations ain't being had. I think when situations going on, every time a situation going on, niggas like us, niggas who who, who have lived through this shit, need to have open conversations so niggas can all, all start understanding and, and understanding the situations. Facts. Nah, you did it the wrong thing. Cause a lot of these niggas think the shit they be doing be right. But you know, I'm gonna tell you what it is too though, probably like a lot of these niggas like one thing I be big on is like niggas be wanting to have that title of being a boss, but don't take no kind of accountability. Like nigga, I don't give a fuck. I, whether it's with my bitch, whether it's with my partner. When I'm wrong, I just be like, oh damn. And we're going, we going on on. Like, nigga, I'm still, I'm still in charge, nigga. It ain't, it don't knock down my flop, my character because I'm wrong. Niggas yeah. ain't taking a no kind of accountability. Niggas wanna like find ways around how they write. And that shit ain't, it just, it, I don't know, bro. Like, it, it part of that time changing. Accountability. Accountability. That's, that's, like, that's every boss got to That's a hell of a fucking word. That's every boss got to take it, bro. Every boss got to take it. Not just even the boss, it, chest, even just period in life. You just got to be accountable for the shit that you well, fucking do. If you'll be accountable for your flaws, it, 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 you'll live a lot better. Nigga don't understand it. And if you take sacrifices, you'll get a lot more blessings. The only, thing, the only two things you got to do, dog. That right, you see what I'm saying? That and show right. respect at all times, dog. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like I used to, I used to think that backing down with from a nigga used to make you soft and shit. Like I used to think that shit a lot because that's all I, everything around me. That's what it is. A nigga say something to you, you don't say something. They gonna think you're a bitch. Somebody else gonna try you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I seen this shit happen. Yeah. So in my mind, I used to think that that's how it used to be until I start getting into it with niggas who they said was gangsters and shit. And niggas start telling police and shit. Yeah. And once you go through two, three fucking cases, see, nigga don't understand. That shit costs fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you got that case of aggravated assault charge, nigga, you got to pay 20 for that All lawyer, that. nigga. All you know that. what I'm saying? You got to pay another 10, 20 All to get that. out of jail, Facts. nigga. And Facts. you got to bounce back and still hustle while you doing your thing. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Once you catch two or three of them, you spend about 100. Well, that shit gonna sit your ass down. You gonna be like, boy, you know what? Fuck that, boy. I don't yeah. spend two or three of them bitches. I don't spend their money. Man, it's just really too... Like, I think niggas don't think about the caliber of niggas that you getting into it with. It depend on if a nigga on your level, because it's like, nigga might be gangster, but if home broke, what you going to, like, nigga, I yeah, damn sure ain't going to lose my life to no, because bro, a broke yeah, nigga, yeah, like, nah. what? A broke nigga tripped me on the street? A, a broke nigga got me paying a lawyer so I can I can beat a charge? No, bro, it don't. Some shit is like, certain shit don't make you, you got to just think about, like, what the situation is, what the stipulation is. Like, if it ain't no situation where it's just like, you know, a nigga just bitching you in front of everybody and you got to make an example out there, nigga. It's like, bro, some shit is just like, nigga, ain't even no point at addressing. Like, nigga, I see all kind of shit in the comments. What I'm going to address it for? Or I'm going to go back to back for it. Like, niggas ain't, if niggas ain't having what you have, them niggas, you got to know them niggas going to die for anything. They don't give a fuck. They ain't got nothing to live for at that time. You know what I'm saying? Don't come and be hard sometimes, you know, I swear. You said what? Comment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be hard sometimes, yeah. dog. Yeah. It be every blue moon nigga get you. Oh, talking me. Me too. I'm, I'm talking oh, about man. myself. Oh, oh you said the Come on, man. Come in, you know boy. That. You be like, man, explain that shit. You, go, you, go you be, you be strong in hell, boy. Like, what? Man. <laughs> Nigga might type a whole thing and then say, if I look lame as hell if I ask, get in his way, get up out of there. Be like, nah, I ain't gonna do it. Don't even hey, do it to yourself. I'm talking about, and then you know Grove, right? Because I do a lot of time. I find myself a lot of time. I be, I be him type of pussy ass nigga. Nigga, where you at? And I get to the end and I read and I be like, erase that shit. Exactly. Nah. Exactly. Don't I go back know. to that bitch. I got to say something. And I be like, Nah, man, he raised it. Fuck oh, that yeah, man. He raised I was spent five, ten minutes. I said, Paula, you don't spend all the goddamn time. They got you mad as fuck. Man, come but on, that, man. But when you can do that, that's growth. You know what I'm saying? That's growth. And in this industry, I'm still if, if, on if you don't have that, if you don't have that in the industry, dog, you're gonna be submissive of anything happening to you. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Facts. Because you're not gonna be able to control yourself. Facts. You see what I'm saying? I don't been in a lot of situations. I should pray God that it didn't end out wrong. Because, I, like I say, like, you know how it be when you live in that life? You don't really be thinking. You just do. Everything happens in the split. Second. You see what I'm saying? You just fucking do. And four seconds, four seconds will cost so you a motherfucking good. life, boy. Yep. Four yep. seconds, dog. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm going to ask you this, yo. 
why don't you think that the younger generation don't pay tribute to the ones who paved the way before them, like these other cities do? You know what I'm saying? Like New York, like they big up. I don't shit Nori and Jada, like all of them in Cali, they do the same thing. And like in Texas, is trade everybody who done done it. They like they big they niggas up. But it seemed like in Atlanta, it's just like shit. If you ain't doing that shit now, nigga, I don't fuck what you did then. Shit, what's the biggest thing going right now? Social media. Yeah. That's it. Everybody really just trying to find their own way to look like they popping. Niggas don't give a fuck about popping for real. Niggas just trying to look like it. I'm not looking at what that nigga did in 20 years ago. That nigga was relevant 20 years ago. He ain't relevant. It's a different time now. That's why it's called Instagram. Everything is instant. People just, niggas be all in your DM like, bro, hey, sign me, this, that, and the third. Like, nobody putting in no kind of time. The only people that making it be the people that put in the time, but you don't see the time they putting in. It just be everybody wanting instantly. Well, ain't nobody got time to go study how how bro sat here and went through his shit. Yeah, I went through my shit too. Like, now how I'm gonna get two thousand likes on Instagram? Cause I need a nigga to understand. Like, nigga, I'm the next nigga out of the city. That's the mindset of where we at now. Like, it's just time done change. You know what I'm saying? We it ain't what it used to be back then. And once we grasp that concept, we just be like, all right. You gotta be a hustler. You gotta figure out how to adapt and be like, shit. Do you think it could change? Do I think it could change? Mm -hmm. It's gonna change. I don't think it'll go back to what it used to, cause times just evolved. I'm just talking about from the as far as the aspect where niggas start younger younger generation starting to listen to the older generation. No, hell no. Nah. Nah, so you think, think you think you think you don't think it's gonna get back on track, or you think it's just right now? I mean, as long as as long as like social media running shit, you gotta think niggas blowing up overnight. You get you make one song put on TikTok, they might make a dance to a nigga rich tomorrow. Don't even know how the nigga got rich. It's like, and then it's so easy to be honest with you. It's a lose lose game. It's a win lose game, but only for the industry, and people don't understand that because the nigga who rich tomorrow, he rich because he ain't never had no money. They threw some money in his face. He don't even know he just got fucked by a whole uh, by a label. He don't even know it though. He never had no money. They know he don't got no money. So everybody that's yeah. like, as soon as a song go up and they grab the nigga and throw him a deal, they know he gonna bite. Nigga been broke. Nigga been struggling for too long. Like we they tell, we ain't read. They know niggas ain't reading no deal, no none of that. It's happening like too fast. As long as they keep this cycle going, it's like they, the 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 industry always winning. Niggas always getting in trouble. It's always it's always some shit, bro. Like social media just like. Controlling like what's the narrative right now? That's the new. Narrative. I like it, but I hate that shit. At yeah, the same time. You know what I'm saying? I like that it, but I hate it at the same time. I ain't nothing real no more. Cause sometimes I like, even like now with me doing this podcast and shit. Like sometimes I might go a week without posting. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Cause I don't be, I just don't be thinking about. It. I ain't never really been no social media person. Yeah, but I understand the importance of it. So it's just like they use it. Mine is the flip side. I know I need to use it, but I don't you like don't. using it. Yeah. But I know that I need to use it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But the shit's so tricky because if you start using it, using it, using it, it should pull your ass in. Get a deal. You see what I'm saying? Get a deal. It should pull your motherfucking ass in. You know what I'm saying? Then that shit start having you respond to shit that you don't respond to. You know what I'm saying? Have you got them doing shit? Have you saying shit? Because I be telling these young niggas, stop putting your goddamn guns. On your motherfucking videos. But it, it, this, I'm telling you, this what it is though. Like that's niggas get a rush out. Like likes is the that's a, it's a heart for a reason. Like niggas live for this shit right here. Like to get them likes, nigga. If I can get 5k likes off of shooting a nigga, niggas live for it. That's like the new currency now. Like I don't. It's a new day and time. Like bitches living for that shit. Like nobody really give a fuck about. Let's for real, for real, like sit down and get our shit together. It's like, nah, like everything about life. They won't go to life. jail, man. Huh? I ain't never seen they won't go to jail, man. Bro, come on, bro. It's social media. It's like. See, I but see, it, it ain't. Enough. It's social, bro. It's but, social but, media. It, is but see, bro. It, ain't, like, it ain't what you do, it's just how you do it. Like, y'all spend all the money on all the other shit. Nigga got gonna spend you 2500 go buy you prop guns. For what? So you can put on your Instagram and not go to jail. Nah, niggas ain't thinking like that. Niggas come on there with the scraps. It's the same. It's the same. But like, it's the wanna, same difference, niggas though. Come on the, niggas come on Instagram asking who want to be an op. Like, niggas go find the ops for no reason just so they can say, like, this is the so world we live in. Up, I bro. hate to say it, but this, this is the world we live in. Like, brother, if you understand the depression of the world, people really ain't depressed. They only depressed because it is social media shit, bro. Yeah, you nah. get on there and it's like, 
You really want it. Your mind mentally telling you, I want to escape to a reality that I could probably get to one day. It's a fantasy right now, but I might get closer. But the more and more while you on there, you just start getting depressed because you start thinking a nigga in a Lambo really living like that. Nigga holding the racks, holding his partner racks, the nigga who fucking him racks. You know, it's like yeah. that for real. And these niggas nigga crashing. Don't know it. And these niggas nigga crashing. Crash behind, niggas Ooh, crashing and getting the crash. Bro, you said shit, dude. I'm fighting blood up, bro. Man. It's like. I'm in the pot, man. man. Hit your cup, man. That, that shit, don't you? Hey. Woo this shit real, bro. This hey, nah, real, that, bro. that like, make a lot of sense right there, boy. It's a damn time we in, though. That make a lot of money. It's a damn time. Like, right keep it real with you. Um, Parlay, like I said, bro, like I said earlier, I'm a hustler. For all this shit I wear, bro, I don't give a fuck about none of it. Yeah. But get what, get what I understand, though. The clothes and the stuff that I buy, niggas only going to spend money with niggas who look like money. So it's called R R O I, return of interest, return of investment. I'm gonna go spend on this drip because every time I get on the gram and take a picture in this shit, it's a nigga want a feature. It's a nigga who think niggas looking at that and they buying into the materialistic shit that's making them want to invest. They see a nigga who look like he's spending money, they want to shop with the nigga. This the new way of trapping. Yeah, you gotta go spend like shit, nigga. I might make a ten off a show and turn around and go buy spend seventy five on a on a fit. But I know this, this 75 finna get me 10 features. That's another 50 rack. So I'm back up again. That's how the game works. Like, you just got to understand how the game being played and learn how to jump in there and play it the right way. Like, it's what we on. Like, Why these niggas don't play like that, though? Why these young niggas get in here and crash this shit out, man? Because so you make this shit sound easy. And that, it, everything be easy when you start understanding the formula. Look, don't look hard to cook to a nigga learn how to when a nigga learn facts. how to cook and scratch that motherfucker. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, nigga talking like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, nigga, you ain't knowing what nigga putting on this. Yeah, we bring making that motherfucker jump like one and a half, two for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't understand the game, you would never know. Yeah, so me being in the rap game, I gotta eat. I ain't in this shit for no chains. I ain't in this shit for these hoes. I ain't in this shit for these niggas. I don't give a fuck about none of them because I don't know none of them. I fuck with them though because they my people and I want to see everybody win. But when it come down to it, I only owe it to my family and myself to, to make sure we eat. So I'm going to pop out when I need to pop out and we ain't got to pop out, nigga, I ain't popping out. I know what's going on out here. It's just that day and time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just hungry, hungry for a piece of shine. They ain't hungry to better their situation. I just need that little piece of shine because that, that's the new drug now. Them lights drugs. Like, yeah. niggas trying to get them lights for real. But you need to start goddamn doing some lying, dog. Ain't gonna be iron with your parlay. You should gotta start. You should gotta get on and say, talk this shit, dog. You can't. See, listen, I'm gonna tell you. See, this is why I say this. This is why I say this. Because listen, I was just like that, dog. I'm trying to understand the power of my voice. Yeah. I just thought, I'm a nigga from the hood. Right? I say shit, yeah. Nigga be saying, I don't be it. Same way. I don't want do that. Bro, you'll, you, you'll, fi you'll fail to realize, dog, how many times that you speak, how many niggas you'll make understand this shit. How many of them niggas who understand to be like, nah, hell, nah, you don't, yeah, fuck that shit, listen to your role. Then you, them niggas will be like, oh, hell yeah. Then everybody, each one, teach one is a method. Because I'm going to tell you what, we don't understand. Word of mouth. You never going to hear nobody talk about you to you. Of course. You see what I'm saying? No, no, actually, I'll, you know what, you're right. Damn, you I'm never going to hear nobody that. talk about you to you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I they gonna talk about, well, hell yeah, but I fuck the boy, yo, he be going hard on that song, got that woo 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 and and it be word of mouth. You see what I'm saying? Damn. So when, when you say shit, and even when you think niggas ain't listening, it be the handful of niggas that is listening that you do it for. Mm, you see what I'm saying? That right. So when that, when you saying shit, it's just like, oh shit. That shit made me say, God damn, Pale. Cause bro, I don't even I don't even do videos. I don't do that shit, bro. You look at my pages, just look pictures, look video, my football team, this. But when I start talking, niggas start tuning in. I start saying, "Oh shit, nigga really be listening." And I start doing little, little shits called OG talk. Yeah. Like, OG talk, man. Blazy, blazy, whoop, whoop. And niggas biting on that shit. I was like, "Oh shit." I start thinking, niggas really don't be having nobody talking this structure the shit, business shit. Yeah. shit. Who really come from this shit and who's successful? Nigga can look at and be like. Oh no, nah, Charlotte got down for real. So that's why I said, niggas just start talking that shit. Nigga just, we need that shit. Nigga need that shit. Cause it's, it's a lot of niggas gonna be able to listen to you who not gonna listen to me. So, you see what I'm saying? So. Like on my podcast, I, I don't know the demographic, but it be a lot of street niggas who I know don't be knowing none of this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Killer yeah. Mike did what? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well he, well, he, did, he did what? Niggas don't be knowing none of this shit. It's new. Because a lot of these niggas who follow us, who front the streets, who know our story, them niggas got, 
135 motherfucker um, followers on Instagram. I know. I, you see what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Them, them niggas ain't. But saying. these is the niggas who going to cheerlead the most for you. I don't want to use you cheerleader, but I get what you these are the niggas who going to got them rep for you the most. most. I get what you're you see what I'm saying? Yeah. These are the niggas who going to spread this word. Yeah. So you got to continue to give these niggas some word, motherfucker, spread it, dog. Right, dog. You got to talk that shit. That intelligent shit. There ain't too many niggas intelligent, dog. All right. This shit hard, bro. To be from the street and be intelligent. Yeah. And they try to help niggas and talk to niggas, knowing niggas that really can't understand what the fuck you talking about for real. But you got to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 a nigga. That's our responsibility. Yeah. And I think the generation before that failed at that, and it taught us to be self self sufficient. And then when it taught us to be self sufficient, we was like, "Fuck these young niggas." Shit, we had to get it like these young niggas got to get it how we got to get it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause all nigga around who my around my age, I'm like 38. All nigga around my age, shit, we just did what we did. And all the young niggas, we put the young niggas on our team. And we gave them niggas dope and weed and yeah, guns. I remember all that you see what I'm saying? I remember that. So so it we played a part in that shit too. So now by by process, we have to be the we the, we the age where we have to be the one to keep speaking this shit to these young niggas, even though when they don't want to listen. Mm-hmm. So like we were young, a nigga used to tell us, hey man, I'm be doing that shit, bro. You need to be doing it, you need to be going to school, bro. The coach keep coming for you. I'm like, fuck that shit, man. Yeah. I'm doing that shit. Yeah. How you gonna tell me, nigga, you the one selling me the weed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we get in a position like we end out, but we ain't got to do that no more, but we came from that, we got to preach businesses. We got to preach entrepreneurship. We got to preach, like you saying, understanding the system so this shit ain't fucking hard for you. But who going to teach these niggas? I'm going to tell you what I'm gonna tell you what I feel like it's going to be. It ain't really so much like I don't mind talking to it, but niggas don't mind. Niggas don't. Only reason why you, like, like or whatever you did to make money, you did it by, because what? Shit, I wanted some money. But I mean, how you find out that nigga was getting money? See, I seen it. You seen it. So you yeah. want to listen to no nigga tell you what to do. Yeah. And that's the problem. Like, niggas yeah. ain't listen to a niggas preach. It's kind of like, nigga, what you doing to get money? But the, the, the fucked up part about it, the crazy part about it is the lifestyle that niggas be living, doing certain shit. We, we get comfortable with doing what we know. Facts. Like, the day yeah. nigga, I sat on the yeah. phone four yeah. hours talking on the phone about my credit. I did not want to do that. And I, it started, I was on Instagram, and I saw that shit. I said, it hit my mind. I said, damn, bro, you need to call them folks right quick. I said, nah. Then I said, you need to call them folks. You, niggas got to have discipline. Niggas got to want to do different shit. Niggas got to want to know it's a different hustle. It's another way. If you don't want to know, then shit, you're going to stick with what you comfortable doing. And being comfortable, like, it going to give you the results that you won't be happy with. I, I think this is I think this is the fucking longest run niggas don't ever had. Do you think with the talent that we got coming out the city, Young and even with the older guys reinvent themselves with, with whatever the business they got going on. Do you think it's gonna lead them motherfucking time soon? Nah, I ain't gonna count. Nah, we running shit, ain't it? Nah, we running. We running shit, ain't, we running, ain't, <laughs> I ain't I ain't got to say. No, they come we down running here shit, from all man. over. Like they know what it is. Like, but what it is is, I think like where, and I rock with New York, but I think where New York failed to do was evolve. Like, we just gonna keep evolve. Like, we evolve. Like, bro, I never forget, bro, when I, I never forget, like, I thought Atlanta was finna be done right before Snap Music came. Man, I thought we were done. Like, I thought it was over with. That Snap Music came, and it was another way, and then it was like, it was over with. But first, before the, before the Snap Music, it was the rock star shit. That's what started the new way. Mm-hmm. Let me see what we went from. What we went well, from? It was it was a crunk era. It was a crunk, crunk, crunk era. music. Uh-huh. But well, the crunk and the snap music it really happened at the same time simultaneously. Okay. Cause Lil John and Scrappy, Scrappy Trillville, yeah. Crime Mob, they dropped in 2004 saying saying yo we dropped White T. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Okay. So them kind of went at the same time. But Lil Jon was had kind of had that shit going a little bit with the shit he was having. But when Snap Music came, it kind of drowned that shit out. Yeah. Then we had that Snap Music era, which is what we call pool pattern music. Pool pattern. We had the pool pattern music. Would, after would. pool pattern music, a few years later, Shop Boys came apart like a rock star. Yeah. And then they went from bag make nigga go from bagging yeah, clothes to the little clothes. Man, what? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And see, me just thinking about this shit, all this shit happened on the West Side. I know that. You see what I'm saying? Come on, man. So West Side that. didn't really change the world, being honest. Man. Ain't Shout out to the West Side, nigga. Shout out to the Mohawk and everything. Shout out to the West Side, man. So, for life. Fact, man. So, listen, we in the apartment, right? Mm. Always got to have some stores, all right? Yeah. So, since we in the apartments, 
I want to hear your craziest story or uh, story that I happened in apartments. In apartments? Yep. Whether this nigga got the head count. buzz, the J got the fame, nigga, whatever it is, I, I need to get an apartment story. Give me the pot mix, then on, give me the story. I'm gonna speak with probably one that was probably funny, but it was right. yeah, I'm gonna speak it, whatever. with something funny. It was uh I never forget. First time Laffy Taffy would ever heard. All right. Ever. And I got that shit was crazy. I went over to the temp with a little broad, uh had a little party over there, little redhead, whatever. Had a little party over there in the temp. I knew a couple niggas, but I ain't know everybody over there because I ain't from the temp. So I'm over at the party, me and my partner. Man, I remember like nigga came up with the CD and was like, man, play this shit. I'm telling this shit finna go. And they look, what is it? What is it? They put the CD in. I hear it. And I'm like, damn, that motherfucker coming on hard. I swear to God, I thought like, man, this shit is not gonna do shit. Cause that motherfucker ain't had no drop. It was the same thing all the way through. We leave outside the party. As soon as we leave out, these niggas out here with paintball gun. And then while they out here with paintball gun. Hey, who that was with the paintball gun? Man. We used to come through the town, straighten that shit up with the paintball gun. Man, I want to say, like, two niggas came, walked up. I'm looking like the paintball gang going. I, I see these niggas shooting paintball gun, but I ain't. This nigga look like he got a real scrap. Hey, bro, where y'all from? I was like, shit, uh, boom, gone. I'm a body. I'm talking about nigga done left the car and everything, me and my partner, because I'm like, I'm already knowing nigga. We like, they were 10. 15. They were 10. We like 15, 16. They were, yeah, they were 10. That was yeah, 10. That was 10. Yeah, my 10 little nigga, niggas. I'm, oh, yeah. my 10 now. Yeah, nigga, I'm young as hell. Nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm like 15, 16, but I ain't, nigga, I want some party shit. I ain't yeah, yeah, like no, nah, that wasn't a hot party. That's what you do. I'm saying that shit, bro. I got the hell up out of there, left the car and that motherfucker and everything. And I called my little partner. He said, man, come on, man. He called, bro, and said, bro, chill out, bro. That's my folks. My brother said, bro, I said, nigga, I don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? Everything was, was cool after that, but it was just like, yeah. I don't I had to get the hell up out of there. I ain't know what the fuck was going on. Motherfucker pop it. I seen that fight. I was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't going though. All right, see, so what you been from the city, all right? Yeah. Have some city talk. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of niggas say Atlanta, and a lot of niggas be from a, di- a lot of different parts of yeah. Atlanta. And I always talk to niggas from the city, and we be talking about this shit when niggas be screaming, this, this, this. What you been from a city? If a nigga say he from East Atlanta, where you gonna think he from? Moreland Avenue. Moreland, Grashaw, that little area. Kirkwood, Edward. If a nigga say from the east side, where you gonna think he from? Like Candler Road going all the way back. All right. So I be telling niggas it's a difference in between East Atlanta and the east side. But you know, I ain't gonna lie, I think it's even bigger than that. I, I agree with now that. Now it is. I think it's like East Atlanta, then the East Side, and then you got them niggas that's like, I ain't saying they ain't doing shit, because I know some like, niggas like, out there like getting active. I know Bruce them Street. niggas out there getting active, but you know I don't be saying? looking at that like the East Side to me. Though. Because it's never been considered the East Side. That's what it was. I mean, well, it that's called the East when Side they, because it's outside of East Atlanta. Well, yeah, yeah, you yeah. See what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So that's why niggas exactly. call it the East Side. But see, niggas from County Road say they from East Atlanta too, though. You mean why they say that? I'm just saying niggas they say that because if you if you pay attention though, if you go down Memorial Drive I know all that, exactly. and you stop at Candler, that's where Atlanta end and that's where the cows start at yeah. too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I be telling niggas it's a it's a it's a big old difference. And like when niggas say Hollywood the north side, I like, bro, really ain't no north side of Atlanta, bro. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like when niggas think north side of Atlanta, niggas think Marietta, like right. Where you right. from Marietta. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So but where the city spread and and, and the city start growing, like College Park used then used to be when and then like by Roosevelt Highway with the bricks and Hickory Park that used about. to be College Park. It ain't mm-hmm. College Park no more. It's right. South Fulton. Right. College Park is now like old Nat on back. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And a lot of niggas be saying, I'm from here, I'm from here, I'm from here, I'm from here, I'm from there. I be saying, bro, y'all niggas ain't really from the city. Where you from? Nigga from the east side. Yeah. Oh, yeah I don't really know you from. I need you say from the east side. Yeah. Because niggas from the east. If you're from Canada, you're not going to say I'm from the east side. You're going to say, I'm from Canada. Mm-hmm. That's how it down. You're right. You ain't lying. You're not going to say I'm from the east side. You're going to say I'm from Canada. You're going to say I'm from Glenwood. I'm right. from Second Air. I'm from yeah, McAfee. Yeah, That's what you're going to say. That, you're yeah. not going to say the east side. Facts. That. If a nigga say I'm from the east side, bro, you're from Lothonia somewhere. Yeah, you out East is motherfucking facts. You out That's you why you hear Rich Homie Corn say I'm from East Atlanta, not Decatur. Because niggas don't understand. Niggas think that 
when you get the calendar, that's the cater. Nigga, the cater go all the way to the left. Nigga, but you know, nigga be just, they don't be understand, nigga, you could be from Milwaukee, nigga. If you get active, you just get active. active. Like, it, that's all it is, too. Half these niggas from the city, out. ain't half these niggas who rep the city ain't even from that motherfucker anyway. To be honest with you, you know what like, I'm I mean, nigga, I'm, where you make your name, man. Nigga, I was at, I was born in Georgia Baptist, not Atlanta Medical. You talking about I was Georgia, Georgia Baptist, Baptist, nigga? Yeah. If you weren't like born that great or Georgia Baptist, yeah, your ass ain't from you Atlanta. Yeah, there wasn't nothing there that you were really born at outside of that. You, you weren't born saying? in like, Atlanta, dog. You know what I mean? Good fact, dog. Like, yeah, I like see, even when, even when, like, what crazy is, when I first made Posse, Posse was made because. I used to hang with like the nigga who gave me the game, taught me the game with Ted Wood. Ted Wood, Ted Wood, the Wood, only niggas, niggas in the city of Atlanta who say posh. Shout out These facts. like Corey, these facts, Coach dog. E, Corey, these facts. and my nigga, Shout like my boy Pooh, Ace, man. all them like Jeff the Great. These niggas, they older than me, but these the nigga who gave me the game when I when I, when I was younger. So when I first heard the beat, I swear to God, I got in my heart. I said, "Boy, this a hit." I heard the beat and knew it was up. I said, "Damn!" I said, "Man," I thought about I thought about Corey. I'm like, "Damn!" All this shit started in the basement. Ted Wood Pots, I mean, my nigga, that nigga rep that hood. Like, he, he rep, nigga, we had the first projects in in the world, nigga, Ted Wood. Nigga, Facts. Ted Wood, he would, yeah, Facts. I said, boy, I'm going to do this for my nigga. And, like, that, it was crazy because, like, after I did Made Posse, like, all the old heads, like, hit me on, like, boy, what you know about Pop? What you? But it was all love. It was all embraced. Like, everybody went back to court, like, like Coach E, like, knowing that my nigga, like, home put me on that shit. Like, and it was just, like, I was trying to find out a turn. I was like, you know what? I ain't going to cuss in the hook because I feel like that motherfucker going to go. So instead of saying nigga, I said posse. posse. And then it was like after that, it was just like oh, posse up in Versace. Oh, you know, by, like that hook, I ain't cuss at all because I felt like I knew that shit was yeah. gone. Like I knew that motherfucker was gone. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you, really learning. shout out to motherfucking Ted Wood. The first project housing in the United States of America was in Atlanta. It was Ted Wood Project. You know what I'm saying? Just to get a nigga some game. Well, shit, my dog, man. I appreciate the time, dog. You know I what I'm saying? Appreciate you, bro. Putting up on me, you know what I'm saying? Shit like this, like I said, conversations are needed yeah. with the youngins to see what niggas mind at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then if a nigga think this, then we have a discussion about this shit. Oh no, nah, you think about that? No, nah, you thinking the wrong way. Yeah. And I just think dialogue needs to start happening more and more and more. But these young niggas gon' ain't gonna talk to anybody. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like niggas like us, niggas will sit down and come talk, you know what I'm saying? Come talk about this shit. We might can start some bullshit from going on. Man, we can start a lot. Of, we gotta learn, we got, we, well, what it is is, bro, like, a lot of niggas been raised a little different where we don't, like, love is a threat. Niggas don't know how to love. Niggas don't even, niggas think fucking that girl is love. Like, for real, for real. Fact. Niggas ain't no understand, like, we don't know how. We think it's some, some bitch shit. We'll tell a nigga, like I was just saying the other day, we'll sit here and find a nigga with a bag and he big bro, i shoot for you. Meanwhile, nigga, your bitch been holding you down six months and you still talking about, I can't tell that net, I love her, I ain't cuffing these hoes. Nigga, what? Talk to him. The one that love you, that's what, but it's, we just fucked up. We got to understand what, we understand what love really is. Like, that's why it's only a few of my niggas. I'm not thinking, about, I don't walk around thinking like, damn, I, would have, I never would have thought because we already had that conversation where we understand what love is. It ain't no, hey, bro, send me no bread. Them niggas see me count up 20 bands and go home and won't sit here and say, damn, home, send me. It don't be about that. It's like, shit, nigga, send something, you send something, you don't send nothing, you don't. I, we all know what we in for. We all in it to win, but it's nobody trying to take the front seat, nobody trying to take the shine. You just got to teach niggas what love really is and that it's not no bitch shit. Because that's what, that was <laughs> And he really loved when he when a nigga understand what love is, that was gonna make him treat women different. That was gonna make him treat women that was gonna make him see that that you know don't disrespect the thug or none of them. But that's what's gonna make them feel like that slime shit is not the right thing to do. You don't slime. Never been a part of love. Facts. I would never slime like my my nigga. Talk no, for what? That's not. I don't love you if I can if I if I even think of doing it. Like I don't do that. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So what? It's, it's like it all really start with. Converting these nigga to understand what love is. You can still stand on your ten, be a man, shit, nigga. If you gotta do a nigga, you gotta handle your business. You gotta handle your business, but only because of, like I teach my son that it's only. But when it comes to disrespect, that's the only time you get. That's the only time. Like I don't give a fuck. You never gonna let a nigga disrespect you, but you embrace a nigga with love first. Let a nigga know, hey, look, we ain't know no bullshit. This how we real. We real. We keep it like that. Now you gonna embrace the love, and if you ain't, then shit, nigga, I know what time you on. Just let a nigga shit. Show. Sure.
Appreciate for dropping that knowledge, nigga. That's what this shit is. So. And welcome for coming, dog. Keep spreading this shit, dog. Do what it for. It's going to take niggas like us, like I say, a conversation like this. You know what I'm saying? Niggas hearing that shit and yeah. how, t- how intelligent niggas is. So every time you do tap in, nigga be waiting to hear that shit, dog. So. You know what I'm saying? And see, just keep pushing up that shit, man. And yeah, what it is, man. We in the motherfucking apartment. That's how real this shit get in the apartment, man. OG Talk presents in the apartment with Pale. You all got it. Man. Yeah, what it is, man. Always. Hey, Pale. Meet me at the apartment.